Colin here today, and today we are going to do many things. We're gonna. This is episode three, by the way. So hopefully, you guys have been watching episodes one and two, because this is where we get into things. Because this is where I'm going to start doing player of the week. So player of the week is where I pick players out that I find had done really good and have done better than any other player I've seen in that entire week and kind of place them there because it's been and it's going to be based off like one maybe two maybe even their entire stat line and we can just look at that stat line and just kind of base off who was the player who was the player of the week for that week now player of the week is going to be based off the last week um while the predictions will be based on the future week so you might be thinking, oh, but this guy was the player of the week this week. How can you predict he was player of the week now? Well, that's because I predict that's because that was the, what I, my opinion was on the player of the week for the last for the last week, and the predictions will be based off future games that will happen in the following week. So, um, this is Colin Byer on Colin Sports Talk, getting into player of the week. Um, again, no Max Gibbs. He's not here this week. <laughs> it's me all alone, once again. Anyways, Colin here, Colin Sports Talk, Player of the Week. Let's go. <laughs> and we're back. That was a new intro. We have not, we have not made a new intro yet. That was a new intro that we um gave for player of the week. And you might already know who might be the player of the week if you've looked at all the NFL games. Leonard four 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 net. This genius running back, this power back on this Buccaneers team is just pretty much like Nick Chubb. This guy's just like Nick Chubb, but he's on the Buccaneers, so he has Tom Brady as his quarterback. This guy made four touchdowns, three rushing, one receiving. That that is crazy. The rush, the total r r yards that he had was 131, but then doesn't matter. His touchdowns, he had four touchdowns. The Patriots had 38 points in total. He scored 74 percent of the team's points versus the Colts last week. This Leonard Fournette is nuts. This guy is crazy. Like, honestly, Leonard Fournette is a really good player. That's why he's my player of the week. But, now, we are going to be going into the best part of Colin's sports talk. The most iconic part of Colin's sports talk. And that is... I'm bad at drum rolls. Predictions! Yeah, buddy! Let's head into predictions. Boom. Same old intro for that section. Um, so, predictions. The most iconic part of this entire show. It's pretty much what this show is made from. Predictions. Where we predict every single game heading into week, into week, insert number. Um, this week is week 13. As you might have known, we're heading into week 13, and we have just come from a pretty, actually solid week, where we haven't seen that many upsets. Um, if I was correct, I think last week I went 6-6 six and six on official records. I thought I had the Colts beating the Buccaneers 38-31, but the Bucks beat the Colts 30-31. So I thought, oh my god, dude, that was the exact score, but it was flipped. In fact, I was actually wrong. I actually had the Bucks beating the Colts 38-31. So that gave me an extra, that gave me a win right there. Um, I'm getting off track. We have to do predictions now. Hopefully you guys are excited. Um, really, the Dallas New Orleans Saints game, Thursday Thursday night football at 8.20 p.m. This game already happened. This is made on a Saturday night. The game already happened. I did predict, though, that Dallas was going to beat New Orleans. 
but I wasn't in the previous episode, I kind of predicted on my own. I make these videos always on like a Saturday or a Sunday. So I thought Dallas was going to win. I count that as a sort of win, even though that kind of like, I don't want you guys to feel like I'm cheating about these predictions. No, I had Dallas in mind for winning that game from the very beginning. Um, so that's one win for me already from the very beginning. Next game I have here is Sunday, Sunday football at 1 p.m. We got Arizona versus Chicago, or Arizona at Chicago. So, yeah. The Windy City, the windy effects of the Windy City ain't affecting Arizona. That game is going to, Arizona is the highest score that is going to pretty much destroy the Bears. All day, every day. So, I think the Arizona Cardinals will beat the Bears 30-14. to 14. Next one, Philly at New York. It's the Jets, it's Jets football, so that's gonna that's what's gonna happen. The Jets are gonna lose again. But the Eagles lost to the Giants last week by six points. That's why I'm giving them a tight game versus the Jets, and they're gonna beat the Jets twenty to fourteen. No overtime game yet, so you never know. Next up. Another 1 o'clock game on Sunday is Indianapolis at Houston. We all know how that game's going to end. Indianapolis beats Houston 47-21. to What did I tell you? They're going to destroy the Texans, honestly. What do the Texans have? What do the Texans have? Brandon Cooks, and that's it? Just saying. That Texan team is not the best team. And they're not even the second worst team. They're like the worst team in the NFL, in my opinion. So, anyways, next game is Los Angeles Chargers at Cincinnati. This is where home advantage actually is working for this team. Because Cincy, I have Cincy beating the Chargers 27-27 to 20. Why? The Chargers are struggling. They're struggling. They lost to the Broncos 28 to 13. The Broncos. I'm not I'm not being biased against the Broncos. No, the Broncos have a pretty good team in my opinion. Even though Melvin Gordon ain't good on Madden, this guy is pretty solid on the field. And Von Miller's gone. They've actually been holding themselves pretty accountable since Von Miller's left the team. So, anyways, Los Angeles Chargers lost to a Broncos team without Von Miller. There's some trouble there, and that's what's also going to lead them to losing against the Bengals this week, 27-20. to 20. Okay. Anyways, Tampa Bay at Atlanta. <sighs> Again, home field advantage ain't going to work because Tampa Bay is going to beat Atlanta 28 I think I'm going to say three. No, 28 to 10, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, next up is another 1 o'clock game, New York Giants at Miami. Another home field advantage game that will work for the team. Miami Dolphins beats the Giants 30 to, 30 to 20. Why? You already know why. Yes, they beat the Eagles last week. Well, how's Saquon doing? Great. Um, Saquon ain't doing good for you. So, that's what I think Miami, that's all Miami needs to win that game, is Saquon ain't going to be helping them at all. At all. So, Miami beats the Giants 30-20. to Next up is going to be a NFC North matchup, Minnesota at Detroit. Um, this game is going to somehow be very close somehow, because the Vikings are the Vikings, they're going to do something... Um, but, and somehow Detroit's gonna almost win. And, but the game will be a Minnesota win. 37-27, to Minnesota. And, why? <laughs> I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep asking why to myself. Because Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson, that's all the answers you need. Jefferson has been a pivotal part on that entire Viking squad. Kirk Cousins throws on the ball. Okay, he's a good quarterback. But who's catching those passes most of the time? Justin Jefferson. 
Who else? Adam Thielen. Those three guys, you got a veteran and you got a rookie that's been blowing up now, are all, like, are the pieces and parts of that Vikings team. And even if Dalvin Cook might not be able to play that game, Justin Jefferson's going to hold that offense together. Like, hold it, squeezing it tight. Squeezing that offense tight together and taking on the Detroit Lions and beating them 37-27 to 27 Vikings. Next up is our first 4 o'clock game, 4.05 p.m. to be exact. Still Sunday. Jacksonville at Los Angeles. This is the Rams this time. All those jokes that people have been making about the Rams. Don't let a 49ers loss affect your opinions on the Rams. The Rams still have a really good defense. They have Von Miller, Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald. You can make all the opinions you want, but in my opinion, the Rams are still God mode. They're still God mode, yeah. And I think Jacksonville will lose by 17 points to the ja to the Rams. To be more specific, to be more, let's say, realistic, the Rams are going to beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 20 to three. Make sense? Got it. Next one. Another 4:05 p.m. game: Washington at Las Vegas. Mm, that is going to be a close game, but a low-scoring game. It's going to be like Washington versus Seattle. It's going to be a low-scoring game in a very close game, too. And this is Washington's second win. With This is what I think is Washington's second game. Was scoring where I went... Blah, blah. This is Washington's second game in a row with winning by less than a touchdown. In my opinion, they will beat Las Vegas for 17 to 14. Not in overtime. Anyways, our first 4:25 p.m. game on Sunday night is held in Pittsburgh, and where Baltimore Ravens go to Pittsburgh and play the Steelers. Now, some people think that the Steelers are going to beat the Ravens, and I sure do hope so. But, another reason why I think the Ravens should beat the Steelers, because they're the Ravens, one. And two, that gives a chance for Cleveland to hold on the on the cocky Ravens and take their butts out of, of Cleveland next week. By the way, Browns are not playing this week, so I'm going to wear my Miles Garrett jersey. But, no Browns are playing, so I'm going to be kind of quite sad, quite sad. But... I think Baltimore will squeeze against Pittsburgh, 30 to 27. Well, no overtime games, just a really close game throughout the entire game. Some way, somehow, Steelers are going to take the lead at one point, but Ravens are going to win 30 to 27. That's your final score. Next up, a 4:25 p.m. game on a Sunday: San Francisco at Seattle. Lumen Field ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. Home field advantage ain't gonna work. You've seen what Seattle has done. Since Russell Wilson came back, they all they barely lost to the Washington football team. What have they done? They lost Chase Young, and yet Russell Wilson cannot cannot hold the Seahawks to a win. Explain that to me. I get it. The O line is not as great as everyone thought it was. Good. Well, yeah. Let me rephrase that. The O line isn't as good. So I feel Russell Wilson's pain. But that's no excuse of losing to the 49ers by four touchdowns. San Francisco beats Seattle to a crisp 35-7. to Oh, then we got a good nut game here. Sunday night football. At least I think it is. I might have got the times wrong. At 8.30 or maybe 8.20 p.m., we got Denver at Kansas City. Denver is at the one of the loudest stadiums ever. One of the loudest stadiums ever recorded in NFL history. That is Arrowhead. Home of the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey, and who else? Oh yeah, Tyreek freaking Hill. We've seen Denver beat teams like the Chargers before <clears throat> last week. So what if they beat the Chiefs? Are they contenders in the, a in the AFC West? Highly unlikely. But, I'll give them a shot here. And if they lose, 
that just takes my record down the drain. I think Denver will beat Kansas City in Arrowhead 18-13. to Close game. I think Denver might pull out. And finally, my one of my favorite games of the week, honestly. New England at Buffalo. To prove who is the who is the who is boss in the AFC East. The Patriots, led by Bill Belichick and Mac Jones, or the Bills, led by Sean McDermott, or Josh and Josh Allen. This is gonna be a very close game, a very good game. A very great, well rounded game. And I think the Bills are gonna pull out. Beat the New England Patriots 28 to 21. The funny thing about this, this win is in overtime. 21 21 heading into the overtime period. And the Bills and the Patriots go back and forth twice, and there's one minute left. The Bills lead a game winning drive. First play, 76 yards to Stephon Diggs, makes it to the 20 yard line of the Patriots. And then Josh Allen throws a beam to Stephon Diggs for a touchdown. The Bills beat the Patriots 28 to 21. Great game. Oh man, that's a, that, that's a lot of fun games. If you agree with my predictions, like this video and comment down below. I agree. Well, you don't have to. It's your decision to make, and I'm not forcing you at all. But if, but just, just so I know that you guys watched, just so I know like you guys participated in, in kind of like socializing. I'd like maybe comment on the video, just so that we can kind of like see what your opinions are. I'm okay with seeing your opinions. You can criticize me all you want. I don't care. Like the video. It's fine. Subscribe to me if you want to. <laughs> Comment on the video if you disagree. And I perfectly understand. We all have our opinions. Now, we're heading into the final sector, which I have not talked to you guys about yet. Which is about the future of this channel. We'll be right back after this, after this transition, may I say? Transition. So, the future. Some people wanted to know what happens in the future. Some people don't even want to know what the future holds. Well, I'm the person that wants to know what his future is. And the future of this channel. Schedule everything. First of all, schedule. <laughs> yeah, I know. No more insanely amazing quotes by Colin Byer or Sir Colin Byer. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at my. I'm gonna have to see how what the future of this channel is gonna be. Schedule, first of all, Saturdays, Saturdays or Sunday mornings if I can get it out. And I want to try to get in the habit of posting it on a Saturday, so I can get it posted early tomorrow for you guys to watch before the games. The problem with my past two games where they always got posted between the football games and that's what really ruined the point of the predictions as half the games were already played and the video came out and it made it seem like I predicted half the games after I saw the games so that's why I'm making this video Saturday night <sighs> I'm a fool but I think I'm gonna be trying my best to post on Saturday nights so which is going to be real helpful because that means I can get this video posted tomorrow morning. And which will be really nice. So, um, other than that, it's really not, that's, and then plus I'm also going to have to edit this video. And it's all that. That's the future of today. <laughs> other than that, that's really the schedule. That's all my future of the channel pretty much going to be. Just post it on Saturdays. Get... Make sure it gets published before the games. And hope you guys like it. So that is it for Colin Sports Talk. If you like this video, please subscribe. Please like the video if you want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. And comment down below if you agree or disagree with, with my predictions and why. 
Well, if you disagree, then you can explain why. But if you agree, then I already know why, because you agree with me. But anyways, just do all the things I just said. Hope you have a great day, guys. Peace out. Call in. Over and out. Without Max Gibbs today. Probably see him next week, if he can come over. Anyways, peace out. Bye-bye.